This is a video about how to refute Hebrew Israelites with the Book of Romans and chapter 9 of Romans, which they <clears throat> try to use to tell people that only ethnic Israelites can receive salvation. But you can show them that they are wrong with the whole of Scripture. Let's start at verse 6 of Romans chapter 9. It says, But it is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring, but through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise. The children of the promise, I'm repeating that, are counted as offspring. <clears throat> so right here, Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites like to communicate that not all descendants of Abraham are God's chosen people. It's only the people who descend from Isaac. <clears throat> and that Isaac's descendants, Israel, is what the God's covenant with Abraham is about and who it's for. Uh, so let's go to Genesis uh, 17. where God gives a covenant to Abraham. When Abram, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will be and I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And he continues on to give Abraham the circumcision requirement and to tell Abraham that his wife would have a son, Isaac. And uh, let's, uh, let's interpret that through the Word of God in Galatians chapter 3. Let's start at the end of the chapter and see what it says. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. So this says that if you are Christ, which means if you're represented by Christ, you're children of Abraham, and you're not just any child of Abraham, you're the children of the promise. It says heirs according to promise. These are the descendants of Abraham through Christ, and Christ is the offspring. He is the descendant of Isaac. Let's go to verse 15 of chapter 3 of Galatians. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say into offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one and to your offspring, who is Christ. So Christ is the offspring who is descended from Isaac. And he is the offspring of the covenant. And when you're in Christ, you become the offspring of the covenant. You become an heir according to promise. In that covenant, God said that Abraham would be a father of many nations, a multitude of nations. A multitude of nations. So... Let's go to verse 7 of Galatians chapter 3. Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. Those of faith are the multitude of nations. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. That was told to Abraham in Genesis chapter 11 and Genesis chapter 22. But we see here a connection between the, the multitude of nations he's the father of and all the nations being blessed through him. See how it connects them. Know that it is those of faith who are 
the sons of Abraham. Okay, that's the multitude of nations. He's the father, he would be, God told him he would be the father of a multitude of nations. These are the sons of Abraham, those of faith. They're included in the multitude of nations that he is the father of, because they're his children through faith. And the scripture for seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So all these nations are the Gentiles who are justified. And them being justified is the blessing that they're receiving. In you shall all the nations be blessed. So all these nations are the multitude of nations. And it says all the nations, not just Israel. All the nations. Israel is not all the nations. And this blessing is justification. That's why it says that right after it talks about the justifiers, right after it talks about the Gentiles being justified by faith. Scripture, for saying that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So all the nations being blessed is not being put into slavery in the future forever, Hebrew Israelites. That's not a blessing. The blessing is justification by faith, which is salvation, full reconciliation to God. The Bible says those he justified, he also glorified. That's going to happen in the new heavens and new earth. Glorification. That's not slavery in the new heavens and new earth. Definitely not slavery. It's glorification. It's eternal blessedness and joy in the presence of God. Fully heirs according to promise. <clears throat> Verse 9. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So right here, we see that the children of promise are everyone who puts faith in Christ. The covenant talked about a multitude of nations that Abraham would be the father of. Here we have people who put their faith in Christ are the sons of Abraham. They're the multitude of nations. They're also all the nations being blessed because it says right there that God preached the gospel beforehand beforehand Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. That exact language wasn't used in Genesis 17, but Abraham is the father of a multitude of nations, and it says, and, and those nations are people who are justified by faith, and those who are justified by faith are all the nations who are, are all the nations. They're all the nations and all the nations are being blessed. So Abraham is the father of everyone who puts faith in Christ and all the nations, everyone from every nation can put faith in Christ if they are God's elect. Salvation is for all peoples. Let's see, let's go back to Romans 9 to another place they love to use. The children of promise are people who put their faith in Christ, who are saved, who are born again, those who repent and believe. <clears throat> At the beginning of uh, chapter 9, it says, uh, Paul's talking, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. So here we have ethnic Israelites. And all these things mentioned belong to them. But guess what? Because everyone who puts faith in Christ is a child of Abraham through Isaac, because Christ is the, is the descendant of Isaac. Because of that, all of these things that were just mentioned also belong to all the nations. Not just ethnic Israelites. The adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. 
the Israelites received these things first, but later on, Christ expanded the scope. And we see in Colossians that he came to earth and died and made peace by the blood of his cross to reconcile all things to God. All things, whether things in heaven or things on earth. Things in heaven and on earth will be reconciled to God. That's language of universality. God came to reconcile the cosmos to himself. Everything was broken off. There was a, broke, a breaking off of creation from right relationship with God at the fall when Adam and Eve sinned. But now, God is reconciling all things to himself. Not just one nationality or people group or ethnicity or few ethnicities or 12 ethnicities. All the nations will be blessed through Christ. All of them. And they receive adoption, glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. These things don't exclusively belong to ethnic Israel. These things are for children of the promise. Who's that? Abraham's children in the line of Isaac. Jesus descended from Isaac, and all who are represented by Jesus are children of Abraham, children of the promise. They receive these things. The Bible talks about being represented by Jesus with certain language, such as God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. When you're in Christ, you're represented by him. It's no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. That's what Paul said. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So that's what it means to, for Christ to be the offspring and for us to be Abraham's children. We who put faith in Christ are the children of the promise and we receive adoption as sons. We receive his covenant. We receive his word and his law. We receive everything he gives to his children who are born again, who have everlasting life those who are represented by Christ instead of being represented by Adam who disobeyed God. So, don't let Hebrew Israelites use Romans chapter 9. Use Romans chapter... Don't let them use it to spread their false gospel. They can use it if they repent and become Christians, but don't let them twist it. Use Romans 9 to refute them. Turn it back on them and cut their arguments to pieces. <laughs>